Hi Dave Whitney here, thank you very much for joining me again. So today I'm going to take you through neoclassical and we'll have a little bit of a look at neoclassical and what makes the neoclassical sound. Now I'm going to give you two exercises to do in conjunction with this. The first uh, exercise is one I wrote myself. It can be used as a picking exercise, it can be used as a uh, as a uh, fingering exercise because it, it has a lot of components that work uh, as an exercise. So uh, what I use it for is to help develop my sense of what is a neoclassical sound um, and that's why I'm putting them in this video because they do sort of have that neoclassical sound. Uh, so I'll play it for you at a reasonable tempo, it goes like this. down, play it a little bit slower, okay, I'm not going to do detailed explanations of these, I guess you just have to use your ear to learn them, uh, just to keep it quicker, so here we go. So that's the first one. The second one is from, uh, someone else wrote it, this is a, like a traditional classical piece, although I have no idea what the name of it is, and it was uh, where I first heard it was in the movie Crossroads, funny enough, uh, and, uh, and it was played as a classical piece with a moving bass line and so forth, and that's how I learned it originally, uh, but then uh, I dropped the moving bass line thing and just used it as a, uh, the, the melody out of it as a, a picking exercise really, and uh, it uh, goes like this. Sorry, I'll come back so you can see it. I'll do it again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, now I'll come up here nice and close, break it down slow, so... time super slow. There are the two exercises, um, and uh, like I said, I'll just pick them, and uh, and uh, everything will be good. Now, harmonic minor is the 
is the scale type that is the root source of this neoclassical style and has it in this this that has this uh, sound you know that's all that's all harmonic minor now for those who don't really know anything about scales and harmonic minors and it all is a gibberish and mumbo jumbo I'll give you a little bit of a breakdown of what harmonic minor is. Uh, and first of all, let's start with minor. What is minor? Uh, minor is an interval, right, between the, the root note. So if I pick any note on the guitar, right, and I play it. In this case, I'm going to use A. I'm going to use the notes of the scale of C major, which have no sharps or flats naturally. Okay, so A, a minor third above that is the note C. Minor third is three frets above, one, two, three, okay? So this would be like me putting my finger on the fifth fret on the low E string and then going up to the uh, eighth fret on the um, E string. So five plus three is eight. So and I have a fifth, perfect fifth above that. You know the power chord thing? That's a fifth, right? And I could have a flattened fifth which would be down a semitone, or an augmented, or what's called sharpened fifth, which would be a semitone higher. And you'll see those words, and you'll hear those words, flattened and, and augmented, and, and that's what they mean. So anyway, I have this minor. Right? Now, when I normally talk about a minor scale, I have three types of scale. A natural minor scale, I have a melodic minor scale, and I have a harmonic minor scale. So a natural minor scale is... Uh, is yeah, let's take for example once again using the, the notes of C major the natural minor what is also known as the Aeolian mode it's the sixth mode or the relative minor of C major now I hope that doesn't confuse you but it's just all mumbo jumbo all it means is that I'm playing the notes of C major but starting on A and finishing on A so I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G and A that's the natural minor. Okay. Now, when I play the harmonic minor, I'm doing exactly the same, but the seventh note is raised to semitone. Right? So, so I end up with this root second, flattened third, fourth, fifth, flattened sixth, natural seven. that you get with those little semitone steps going up. That you hear in that uh, little exercise we did before. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so that's the difference. Okay, harmonic minor. Now melodic minor, just, just while we're talking about minor, melodic minor is different again. Melodic minor starts, it, it's different going up to what it is coming down. And I guess, uh, I, I'll explain it first and then I'll, I'll give you my theory as to why it is this way. But it starts off with a natural minor for the first five notes. Right? Then it finishes as a major scale. So, so instead of having a flattened sixth, it has a natural sixth. Right? So in this case it would be A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. That's our normal minor. That's our melodic minor and our natural seventh. And coming down, think the reason they uh, had the change in there is uh, or the uh, the different notes going up the scale as opposed to coming down the scale is because if you live in the in the very very restricted world of the scale 
the traditional scale, it's very hard to, to create things that sound different. So you have to start branching out into chromatics and, you know, and using the, the grace notes that are around um, the, uh, the pivotal scale notes in order to make your music a little more uh, adventurous and a little fresher. So and great players do it really well. I mean, it's just key to uh, making great music um, and to sounding fresh and not sounding like everything else. Uh, yeah, so that harmonic minor scale is uh, is very very uh, heavily utilised in the Baroque period music in the um, in the uh, you know that whole neoclassical scene. And when you listen to someone like Malmsteen play, he uses a lot of diminished and he uses a lot of augmented. Now they come, they are derivatives of, direct derivatives of the harmonic minor scale. For example, if you look at the notes of A harmonic minor, right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp and A, right, A being obviously the root note again. If we took the second note, the fourth note, the sixth note and the seventh note, guess what we have? We have diminished. Okay, that's because this little guy here, um, the, uh, the natural seventh occurring in a minor scale. And, uh, and if we look at, say, augmented, if we look at the third, fifth, and seventh notes, one after the other, in a chord sequence, we have augmented. So root, third, fifth would be there normally, but because of this sharp and seventh, it's augmented. Okay? So you'll hear those chord types in this neoclassical uh, realm a lot because they are direct derivatives of the variation of the natural minor scale that is known as the harmonic minor scale. Anyway, so uh, so have a have a go with those little exercises and start, you know, mixing the whole harmonic minor thing into your scale. And a really easy way to do this too, by the way, is to look at pairs of strings on the guitar, okay, and to and to do your uh, you know, your three note per string, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then slide to the, to the next octave. So you'll be playing three notes, three notes, four notes, three notes, four notes. You know? so. Crossroads again, right? I <laughs> can't get away from it. Um, anyway, so, uh, but that's a good example. Yeah, and, uh, and that'll get you through three octaves if you play your scales like that too, as opposed to sticking with, you know. string scales which maybe get you up to the fifth of the third octave but they don't really take you any further. That's where they stop right. Easier to get up there. So uh, so yeah there, there you go. How about that? Uh, thanks very much for watching. Take care. I'll uh, post some more videos as soon as I get five minutes to scratch myself. Take care.